Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. We're off to the races. An inflation report cooled in October. Is this the end of the year rally? Certainly looks like it. I see all three, four major indices, if we include the Russell 2000, moving higher. Oil moving higher. 10-year Treasury moving lower under 4.5. It's at 4.445, an area we can work with, i.e. the Fed could cut interest rates sooner than expected based on this trend. Got to be very careful how I use words here. Home Depot beats on earnings as consumers opt for smaller projects. Okay, okay. We talked about that yesterday as far as uh, the home improvement angle that happened in 2020, 2021, 2022. We're going to be in our homes longer. Might as well improve them. But Home Depot beats on earnings, but consumers opt for smaller projects, i.e., getting a little tighter with our wallets as the interest rate hikes from the Fed in the past has given us some tightening um, in our wallets and in our budgets. Let's talk about what we're seeing out there as we do on this show. I feel good about it. Like, this is too easy of a market to call right now. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's, it's weird that I've been exactly smack dab right, and I don't like it. It's too easy. So yesterday we saw kind of a day of digestion. The NASDAQ, the S&P were lower. The Dow was slightly higher, which makes sense because it's been a laggard this year. Stocks were a mixed bag. Investors kept their eyes on Washington for the latest inflation data that dropped this morning and turned out positive. But yesterday was a little caution. Boeing took off following reports that China may soon end its freeze on the 737 MAX, as well as the announcement of several deals for new aircraft, including the Emirates $52 billion order for 95 planes. ESPN will launch ESPN Bet in 17 states, hoping to break through the already crowded sports betting market. Oh, boy, that's going to be a brand that I think does pretty well, right? Um, ESPN Bet. ESPN Sports, ESPN, but like they seem to go hand in hand. Penn Entertainment's going to pay ESPN $2 billion in cash and stock over the next 10 years to slap ESPN branding on its online and brick and mortar operations, previously known as Barstool Sportsbook, and ended that agreement with Barstool Sports to team up with ESPN. Um, it should be a pretty part, part, profitable partnership, in my opinion. Just Guesstimating that seems to make a lot of sense. Content integration, potential existing clients. ESPN has 20 million fantasy sports users who could be converted into sports bettors if they're not already. There's a big ad blitz going on there. When sports betting became legal in 2018, it felt like there was no escaping sports bet book commercials. ESPN could deploy that strategy again. Not a good day to be FanDuel, in my opinion. But... uh. We won't go too deep into that because I have no skin in those games. <laughs> you like how you did that? Exxon is going to become a major lithium producer for EV batteries. It's first big move outside fossil fuel space in decades. Exxon revealed plans to become a top lithium supplier by 2030. Turns out that we have as much lithium in the ground or potential as China does. Uh, the company is preparing to establish a production facility in Arkansas that uses a new extraction method. This could shift the industry uh, the most at this point in time for car batteries. Exxon expects to start production by 2027 to have enough to power 1 million EVs by 2030. Uh, just nice to see Exxon's not sitting on their oil hands, so to speak. Since the pandemic... Uh, enrollment in colleges for Chinese students has dropped, but it's been picked up by students from India. Um, I find that interesting because there's kind of an India-China 
uh, Apple, who's going to manufacture for the world thing going on right now. Chinese enrollment has stagnant over the year over year after having fallen due to pandemic travel restrictions, but about 269,000 Indian nationals studied in the U.S. in 2022-2023, um, not far off from the total of 290,000 students from China. Uh, let's see what else, what are the other big stories that we have to hit? <laughs> Um, President Biden said hospitals in Gaza must be protected as fighting continued around Gaza City's main medical facility, the Al Shifa Hospital. Israel claims that Hamas has a command complex underneath, which Hamas denies. Uh, Los Angeles is facing worse traffic now than ever after a bridge caught fire on Interstate 10. It's going to basically indefinitely close it. Uh, and it was uh, believed to be arson, which just, oh man, if you, if you experience LA traffic, and you have to do a workaround. You are. Err. Crocs and McDonald's are releasing a limited edition shoe collaboration for when you want to show your devotion to Grimace uh, before braving the Grimace shake. Yes, that's right. Uh, Crocs, those rubbery shoes, making a deal with McDonald's. Genius by McDonald's. Genius by McDonald's. Uh, Nepal banned TikTok, saying the app disrupted the country's social harmony. That's very interesting to me because, uh, I certainly feel that in the United States, that TikTok's not ultimately socially good um, for our society, nor is Facebook, nor is Instagram, in my opinion. I just think it's a weird way of communicating your individuality, so to speak. Um, let's take a look at today, October CPI. The total CPI was unchanged month over month, following a four-tenths of a percent increase in September. Core CPI, which excludes food and energy, was up two tenths of a percent month over month, following a three tenths of a percent increase in September. So slowing or sideways is not up. It's considered positive at this point in time. On a year over year basis, total CPI was up 3.2 percent versus 3.7 percent in September, and core CPI was up 4 percent versus 4.1 percent in September. That's the smallest 12 month change in core CPI since 2001, 2021, excuse me, job to two. So my cold, my head cold has moved from the clogged stage to the drippy stage, if you know what I'm saying. So excuse me if I sniffle a bit today. Um, so the CPI number was, was, was pretty positive. It's considered to be a victory for people who are bullish on the stock market. Um, and the markets are off to the races today. So you should feel good about looking at your 401k at the end of the day. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The It's a month reading. And, uh, you know, we've seen a weakening in jobs and we've seen a weakening in inflation. This is giving the Fed kind of what they want, hopefully in the time frame of what they want. Um, but that's to be told. Before its release, House Speaker Johnson is telling CNBC that he believes the continuing resolution to fund the government will pass later today. Um, I hear that's not going to happen. So we have that to deal with at the end of the week, uh, which could put a damper on the bullish mode of spirits on Wall Street. Home Depot reported earnings and issued guidance that looked as much considered better than feared. Anyhow, anyway, you can find me online at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. I'm going to be announcing a webinar soon for the month of December. So get that prepared in your calendars. Um, first Thursday in December, but more on that soon as I get the paperwork finalized on that. You can find me online at robblackshow.com. Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. Google is suing to block alleged scammers from pushing out ads for a fake Google AI chat bot that it claims actually downloaded malware onto people's computers. That's a good public service ad uh, announcement for you. Please consider being careful what you download. Um, strategist at UBS, they're releasing limited, um, they're releasing research Talking about the Federal Reserve, they predict the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates almost four times more than what markets are pricing for. 
And not only that, but the continued decline in inflation will enable the central bank to start easing policy as soon as March in big chunks. Inflation is normalizing quickly. So says UBS's economist, by the time we get to March, the Fed will be looking at real rates, which are very high. That can push the stock market higher. Now, UBS, you're like, who's UBS? That's one. Well, let me give you a second one as well. Morgan Stanley anticipates deep cuts. Researchers led by Chief U.S. Economist Ellen Zinthner said she sees rate reductions starting in June 2024, then again in September and every meeting from the fourth quarter onward. Now, Goldman Sachs, whose forecasts are closest to the market bets and the central bank's own outlook is raining on the parade. The firm doesn't see the first rate cut until this time next year, so the fall, right? You have three different economists given three different outlooks, one in spring, one in the summer, and one in the fall. But they're all saying the same thing. Now, there's going to be some programming changes to this show on radio in the near future. Still be on, just maybe a little disruption. Um, what I can tell you, and I want to pound this again and again and again, I want to get lessons out there in case you lose me. You can always find me on robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. But more importantly, the lesson that I want to pound today is that Wall Street tends to move six months in the future. So today you're seeing the stock market rally bigly. One of the things I did like about the George Bush administration, enormously love, in fact, was that he would mispronounce words or misuse words and uh, to come up with words like bigly. Was bigly Trump or was that uh, uh, Bush? It doesn't matter. Presidents in their vernacular are fun. And um, bigly is, is kind of a fun word to co-opt and, and make my own. The market tends to move bigly six months in advance. If you see the markets down, that's telling you six months from now, they're predicting some bad economic news. If you see the markets up bigly on a day, it means the market's seeing something good six months from now. And I think you can blend these two segments together on how the market sees the future with what economists are saying about interest rates and with the recent reading on inflation. Interesting to note. Now, if interest rates are coming down, that means the housing market might get active again. It's pretty dormant right now. A report released yesterday by the National Association of Realtors confirms what many Americans already know, that home affordability is, you can like afford the gutters of house, you can't afford the house, right? Due to rising interest rates and low inventory, National Association of Realtors found the average income of a home buyer between July 2022 and June 2023 was $107,000. That's up from 88,000 the prior year. So who's buying a home? People who make a little more money, $107,000 a year. That's one of the highest levels ever since the National Association of Realtors started tracking data in 1981. The housing market continues to churn. The share of single women buying homes is almost double that of men. So new homeowners doubling women, single women versus men. They're also slightly older. A single woman buying her first home is on average 38 years old, while a single man is 33. Seems like a, a weird dating app, huh? Home buyers, single women meet single men. Buyers are older. The average first time home buyer is 35 years old, up from 29 years old in the 1980s but it's older people who are buying up the three bedrooms after selling their starter homes. The median age of the repeat home buyer last year was 58 years old. In 1981, it was 36. So the move up home, it's really getting to be more established adults. Interesting. The idea of moving after the age of 55 is very unattractive to me. 
literally my next move will be my last move. Hopefully, hopefully to a community that's uh, got some sand around it as well as some good hospitals. But I'm digressing. Uh, let's take a look at how the markets are doing. See if Wall Street's building on the momentum. It's kind of a nice day. This is a day I've been not waiting for, but kind of, kind of. Um, when inflation is now starting to get to the point where we're like, oh, okay. Um, the SP 500 is up 1.8%, up 82 points. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 1.4%, up 500 points. The NASDAQ up 2.2%, up 305 points. The Russell 2000 is up 3.88%. If you've been a fan of the show in the last year, you're hearing me lament why is the Russell 2000 so dramatically underperforming? Well, there's a couple of reasons, including the fact that there's a lot of regional banks that make up uh, the Russell 2000. Just like the SP 500 has a lot of market weighted uh, mega tech cap, mega tech, mega cap tech. That's easy for me to say. Um, so they're skewed. Uh, inflation steadies core measure rises at the slowest pace since September 2021. This is good news. You're seeing Microsoft, NVIDIA, Airbnb, Starbucks, McDonald's, Amazon, Visa. Oh, here's the first loser I can find. PepsiCo, down 17 cents. Um, but everyone else is a big winner, winner, chicken dinner today. Not everyone else. I should be careful on saying that. But I'm seeing a lot more green than I am seeing red. And um, interesting, right? We get through earnings season. That was okay. Some winners, some losers there. But it takes a, a subdued reading on inflation to really get us going. You can find me online at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. I'm done with live events for the year, but I do have a webinar coming up in early December. More on that probably in about 24 hours from now. You can listen online at robblackshow.com. You can catch some of my videos at robblackshow.com. Um, I'm pretty easy to find. So find me online at robblackshow.com. Nice day. Congratulations for those of you who stayed in. What are you going to do if you got out? That's a big question for you. I'm Rob Black. Don't want to work forever? Check out the retirement planning guide on robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black. Talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Lots going on today. The inflation report was tame, slightly weaker. We want to fight inflation. Some dumb things that I've said through the years on this show, I dumb it down sometimes. Um, I try to not talk in Wall, uh, Wall Street speak. Inflation is the boogeyman. I've said that for 25 years. And 25 years ago, I said, inflation's like Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger. It's the only thing that I'm afraid of. Right now, if Jason Voorhees were to knock on my door, I'd and there's a guy with an axe on the other side, I'd just put the axe in me, buddy. Like, I'm not going to run. You got me. Not afraid of you. You got me. I know uh, I could run a mile, but probably two miles, I'm going to be huffing and puffing. So uh, you got me, Jason. But inflation, on the other hand, I would fall on the ground just crying. Inflation's bad. And we haven't really had to deal with a lot of inflation for various reasons over the last 25 years. Some of those reasons were we sent a lot of our manufacturing overseas. So the Nikes that I wear on my feet were made in Taiwan, made in Japan, made in China. And um, at some points in time, they were made in Korea, made in India. Wherever the cheapest manufacturing is, that's where companies like Nike tend to go. So that they can sell me a $120 pair of Nikes, where if they had to make them completely in the United States, it'd probably be $160. And you have to pay your workers more in America than you do in foreign countries. Just a fact. I don't like it. It is what it is, though. Uh, there's reasons inflation has been subdued for such a long period of time. Um, cheap manufacturing internationally. 
on top of it, productivity gains from the internet, productivity gains from blockchain, productivity gains from um, supply chain management. There's a lot of positives. There's a lot of positives that have kept inflation tame. And then the pandemic hit and whoopsie, we mismanaged everything. I'm not going to say it's that simple, but it's let's let's just again. Inflation is Jason Voorhees. Inflation is Freddy Krueger. It's the scariest thing that you can imagine. Now we seem to be getting it under control. The tide is turning. Can we get it down to 2%, which the Fed wants? Probably not. We have too much uh, positives. We have too many positives in the job market. And that's slowing, yes. Will it continue to slow? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I can tell you that the trend says yes. Corporate America, I've seen more companies this year fire people than I have in the last two or three years, which is, again, part of the weakening jobs report, which is positive for inflation, for a weakening inflation argument. It gets complicated, right? AI bots um, are struggling to transition from novelty to moneymaker. Go ask ChatGPT, how do you pay the bills? OpenAI CEO Sam Altman discussed his plans to attract further investment for the company behind ChatGPT, which is not yet profitable. Altman said he wants enough funding to achieve artificial general intelligence. An artificial intelligence that rivals human cognition. Altman thinks big and spins big. But when it comes to a product that makes money, the whole AI thing is a little metaverse It's not quite there yet. Intelligence doesn't come cheap. OpenAI is trying to poach researchers working at Google with compensation packages worth up to $10 million. That's assuming the company is successful in achieving a valuation of $86 billion on a share sale. OpenAI has joined Adobe and Getty in offering to front the legal costs of any copyright lawsuits that users might incur while using its software. Although it may be hedging its bets a tiny bit, as Bloomberg's reported, um, found only certain enterprise users would be eligible for OpenAI's legal shield. Comedian Sarah Silverman is suing ChatGPT, saying that it's stealing her material. And it could dramatically affect her career, she's saying. Um, If you ask ChatGPT, write a joke in the style of Sarah Silverman, it will write in her style a joke for you. Um, that's a little bit scary and I get it and I, I get her lawsuit. Um, a man that I follow in blogs, um, Scott Galloway, he checked on his, um, uh, how chat GTBT has, has basically plugged in two of his books into its search engine, into its, its, its brain illegally. Um, what's going to be the ramifications of that? So be careful on your excitedness with AI. The big winner, winner, chicken dinner in AI at this point in time. Keep in mind the game's early. Uh, We're talking third inning. But the big winner is NVIDIA and Microsoft. They both have real paths to profitability or big profitability or bigger profitability. NVIDIA stock continues to hit new milestones. I saw a new price target of 650 on it this morning. NVIDIA stock's rising today. All stocks are rising, but it's the 10th consecutive day in a row that NVIDIA has been rising. They unleashed a new Tensor Core GPU, the H200. The chip incorporates performance improvements from its predecessor when generating answers from AI models, i.e. faster and cleaner. Shares have soared this year. NVIDIA is scheduled to report third quarter earnings after the close on November 21, and the results have the potential to push the stock to hit even more record highs. Expectations are high. Vivak Arya from Bank of America Securities wrote in a research report, $650 price target. He uh, adding to investors speculation for the stock to provide a color on how the restrictions of the U.S. government has placed on sending AI chips to China will impact the company. 
what we've learned from NVIDIA is they're dumbing down some chips that they can send to China to satisfy the United States and to get them into China, who is excited to have the high-end technology. It's interesting to say the least. Um, Amazon's partnering with uh, Snap and Meta for shopping. This is a blow, not a blow. This is the battlefront with TikTok. Amazon partnering with Snapchat and Meta, and in theory, they compete with each other for advertisers. They're going to be testing a feature that allows users to link their Facebook and Instagram accounts to Amazon, enabling shoppers to buy products without leaving the apps. Amazon has reached a similar agreement, like I said, with Snap in app, in app, as in in store, but in app, inside the app, shopping with Amazon is available for select products advertised on Snapchat and sold by Amazon or by independent sellers in Amazon stores. The deals on the face look counterintuitive because Amazon Meta and Snap are rivals for advertising dollars and shoppers' eyeballs. Meta's Facebook has its own marketplace platform, although it's less of a destination for large sellers than Amazon. Amazon has its own shoppable content feed, which looks a lot like Instagram, called Inspire. So they all kind of compete with each other, but they're all kind of looking at TikTok going, hey, we can't let these guys have the, the whole pie, nothing but pie. So help me, pie-eating gods. I love pie. Thanksgiving's about one of my favorite holidays because of uh, apple cinnamon crisp pies. The key to partnerships is they have to help both sides marry their strengths, take on the threat of TikTok. TikTok's the video sharing app owned by China's ByteDance. TikTok launched its own e-commerce platform in the United States in September, meaning it can now act as a combined advertising and sales channel. Part of the push to become more efficient, i.e. translating its growing advertising weight into revenue. ByteDance doesn't disclose detailed financial figures for TikTok. That still leaves TikTok as a small player. Meta made more than $113 billion in revenue from advertising in 2022, while Amazon brought in $37.7 billion. You didn't really think of Amazon as that big of an advertiser, did you? Global advertising spending is expected to top $1 trillion for the first time next year. This is pretty big news. Um, when enemies become frenemies to take on the big threat of TikTok, I think that's pretty big news. You can find me online at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Uh, I will have a webinar coming up in early December on retirement planning last event of the year you'll learn more by going to robblackshow.com hit the newsletter and we'll send you an email when that becomes available um, sign up for the events in the newsletter at robblackshow.com visit the rob black show online at robblackshow.com listen to archive podcasts market updates and information from ep wealth certified financial planners online at robblackshow.com in 2024 i'm going to be focusing in on some original podcast content that's exclusive which doesn't incorporate radio show content. Um, I like the format of no commercial breaks, rambling on for 20, 30 minutes and calling it a show. Um, I think it's going to be a trend. You can find me next year more online by going to my website, Rob Black Show. Rob Black Show. It's easier to distribute. Um, it's digital, and you can find out more at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Sign up for the newsletter, and I'll always keep you abreast of new content that I'm developing. Um, one content piece that I'm really excited to try to do is a podcast with Chad Burton on a weekly basis. He's a CFP, a certified financial planner. I think he brings a lot to the table, and we want to hit some content like uh, charitable giving that sometimes we don't get time for on the radio uh, because we're constrained by the, the clock. <clears throat> and I think he's very eloquent. I think he does a nice job. So look for more content next year, 2024. 
Um, you can sign up for the newsletter at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. And I hope to see you there. Um, should be a good year. I'm very, very excited for 2024. Today, the market is responding very positively to a CPI, consumer price inflation number. Wow, holy mackerel. I just looked at a Home Depot. It's up 18 bucks, up 6%. Um, a little bit of a shocker. That's a big number for Home Depot. Tesla's up nine, NVIDIA's up nine. Um, I'm just seeing a lot of winners today as people are starting to feel the next move by the Federal Reserve is to cut interest rates, not higher longer. They're talking now second quarter, third quarter, definitely fourth quarter of 2024. We always had a sneaky suspicion fourth quarter was going to be on the table, but now we're starting to see numbers moved up to second and third quarter based on the inflation data that came out this morning. So the Fed will be in accommodation mode. They stayed low too long. They won't stay high too long. There'll be a number somewhere between that low number and the high number on the Fed funds rate futures. Uh, worthy of note. Now, keep in mind that the market rally we're seeing today could fizzle in large part due to the Federal, uh, not the Federal Reserve, but Congress. So we had our credit outlook reduced to negative this past weekend. That is not a good thing. It is a bad thing. Um, it is not set in stone that they're going to lower our credit rating, but basically they said political dysfunction in the United States between Republicans and Democrats and soaring deficits, which at some point in time, Someone's going to run for president and say, I'm going to cut our deficits. I'm going to cut Social Security. I'm going to raise taxes and they're not going to get elected. Um, we don't elect people who promise to do good things by our country as far as being fiscally conservative. Uh, we elect people who are going to give us more or not take away from us. George Bush Sr. lost his chance for reelection. Because during his first election, he said no new taxes. And then in the fourth year, he raised taxes and people said, nope, we're not reelecting you. When the incumbent has the advantage, uh, it was taken away because taxes. Now, of note, Biden and Trump are both running on the uh, we're not going to cut entitlements in the next four years. Interesting, right? Um, NVIDIA, you know, I told you they've been up for 10 days in a row. They've added 220 billion in market cap. That's stunning. S&P 500 is up 2%. It's getting higher as the day goes long. It's moving up. Same with the Dow, same with the NASDAQ, same with the Russell. The Russell 2000 is up a whopping 4.4% this morning. This inflation news basically has a lot of stockbrokers calling their clients going, you know what? We were cautious on retail spending and the consumer and the jobs going into the end of the year. But this inflation number says we may see an interest rate cut sooner rather than later. And a lot of people are buying stocks today. Now, I've, I've, I've been invested. I haven't really changed my stance. Still have a lot of cash in cash, <laughs> I guess that's a funny way of put it. Um, but I'm I'm comfortable with that. I like those interest rates. And I'm comfortable with that at this point in time. Although, uh, that's my emergency money. So it'll stay in some sort of cash or cash equivalent. The S&P 500 up 2% today, up 87 points, sitting at 4498 A lot of analysts that I follow see 4500 as a good ending point for the year. So we're right around there. I've seen numbers as high as 4,600, not much higher. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 515 points today, up 1.5%. I don't talk a lot about the Dow Jones Industrial Average 30. It's just not my cup of tea. It's 30 stocks. Now, again, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are feeling like the meta cap, uh, mega cap tech stocks. I get it. Um, 
but there's a lot of companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average 30 that I just don't follow. They represent the United States on some levels. I just don't follow them. Russell 2000 is up 4.5% today. The NASDAQ is up 2.2%. Stocks are surging as U.S. inflation cools in October. Again, what could derail it? Well, this Friday could. The U.S. Congress could decide we're not going to get a budget done. And then we go into budget default mode and the headlines are panicky. It'll get done. I put up some nice market commentary on my YouTube channel, Rob Black Show, yesterday. You can check it out. It's a 15-minute interview with a market strategist from EP Wealth, um, Adam Phillips. It's at the YouTube channel, Rob Black Show. Don't forget, I'm going to be adding new podcasts next year. I'm going to be cutting down a little bit on radio. Uh, that's a little bit of a cool tease for you. You can learn more by going to Rob Black Show, signing up for the newsletter at robblackshow.com. And uh, a lot of good things coming in 2024. Thanks for coming along on the ride. We'll talk soon. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth.